Hello, this is Paolo Arias with International Relocation Partner. And every week we're trying to provide useful information about Costa Rica. I know there are many expats that are moving abroad. They're looking at places like, you know, there are many places that are very popular for expats. One of them is, is Grecia, Grecia, Costa Rica. And today we want to talk about Grecia and why so many expats are looking uh, at Grecia as their place. Uh, what, 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 what? Why Grecia, you know? And then, and then I have here two of my friends that live in Grecia, Kinnan and Natalia. And we're just going to say, you know, we're just going to share why a few of the different things. I have a few ideas. Uh, we help people. So, you know, we help people move and relocate from, from countries like United States and Canada to Costa Rica. And Grecia... Every time we talk to many customers and they say, hey, can you give me a quote? I want to move to Grecia. Uh, so I do think uh, this is going to be so, such an interesting conversation. Uh, can you guys introduce yourself? We we'll start with the ladies. By the way, Natalia is our marketing and communications manager. She controls and oversees and helps with the YouTube and all that. And she lives in Grecia. She just moved to Grecia about how long? Maybe three months ago. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, and by, if you need anything with marketing, she can help you. you know, by the way, she can she can help you. Uh, thank you, thank you. But Nat Natalia, can you introduce yourself and why you pick Grecia to move? Being a Costa Rican, this is so important. Yeah. Well, hi everybody. My name is Natalia Rodriguez. I have been, I have been living in Grecia since I don't know three months ago, and I choose Grecia because it's super pretty. I loved it. And I used to live in the border next to the border with Panama, and now I I I decided to move over here, and I have been loving it. So there's a lot of nature. The the cost of living is pretty good <laughs> if you compare it with San Jose. Uh, so I love Grecia. Kieran, can you introduce hey. yourself and tell us why Grecia? You know, we want to know why Grecia is a good place for the expats. For the expats. Okay. So, again, my name is Kenan. Um, for me, honestly, being an expat, I think um, moving to Grecia is actually a good choice. One, it's centralized. The people are very cool. So if you're scared of, you know, talking Spanish, people here, everybody I've met over the last four years have kind of just been very patient, you know. So the, the people, the climate is, you know, it's, it's nice to be here in the mountains. It's not too hot. It's definitely not, you know, cold. You don't get the cold like you get in the United States anywhere in Costa Rica. But the climate is great. Um, and it's just centrally located. So wherever you kind of want to go, if you want to head to the beach, you got that. If you want to find a, a waterfall, you got that. If you want access to just local conveniences, Gracie is a very good place to start. Okay, thank you. Well, let, 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 let's talk about location for a little bit. And I want to show everybody, so I'm, I'm showing things. You know, I want to show, you know, Costa Rica in a map. Here's Costa Rica. And I want to show where is Grecia. So Grecia is still, you know, very centric, very within the, within the Central Valley. And let me, let me just show, show you, if I do that search, I can see Grecia. And it's only a few minutes uh, you know, it's only a few minutes from the main international airport. So here, mm -hmm. where you see my screen here in, in Rio Segundo, that's right next to the main international airport. So it's very close to the main international airport. It's very close to Alajuela, which is a province, one a bigger, it's a bigger community. It's a small little town or city. Um, so it's close to Alajuela. And also within, uh, within Grecia, you, you get to find almost any other amenity that you may need. I mean, you, mm -hmm. the only thing, I guess the only thing that may be missing is the, is the what, the movie theater? That's, I'm just guessing because everything no, else you can find. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so, <laughs> so Grecia, okay, let, let me explain this first. Grecia is part of the province of Alajuela. But as you're saying, there is the city of Alajuela. And so Gracia is, is small, but I don't know, it feels like home. Um, it has a lot of, most of your conveniences, you know, you're, you're trying to buy furniture, um, you know, like electronics, uh, even, it's even close to like other cities like Sarchi where you, you know, get custom made wooden furniture. But if you head back down towards uh, 
But Pablo just said the city of Alawela, that's where the mall is. So you can go to the mall. That's probably one of your closest bigger, bigger malls called the City Mall. And so you have access to that. You have access to what's called Price Mart, which is similar to Sam's Club in the United States. So, you know, it's, a, it's a big club. Um, and it's also close to San Jose, which has a lot of things offered. It is just just really centralized to like all your, you know, if, if you can't find it here, you can just go, you know, a little bit further and find it there. San Jose has a lot of, a lot of, a lot of malls, a lot of um, uh, museums and things. And so you're not in the hustle and bustle of San Jose because uh, San Jose does get a rep for just having a lot of traffic. It just kind of feels like the United States a little bit as far as traffic goes. But when you move out of uh, Grace, you get this quiet place, but now you have access to every, you're close to everything. So I wanted to give you another, like, so you understand, Hako is another expat location. A lot of people move, leaving Hako. Yeah. Uh, it's on the ocean. Uh, so you can be from Grecia to Hako. Uh, Google Maps is telling us that is about a couple of hours. You know, it's about two, two, two hours. Nice, nice two hours to two hours and a half, depending on the route. Uh, the international airport, uh, Natalia, how long is from the, from the, let's say from San Jose or for the main, main international airport? How long would you take driving? Yeah, from the airport, I think it's like uh, 25, 30 minutes um, without traffic. <laughs> With traffic, I would say maybe 45 minutes. Let's yeah. do an hour. Let's do an hour. Yeah. You know. Maybe, I mean, maybe an Hako, hour. Hako is one of my favorite species, and we are like an hour and a half from my house. <laughs> I live yeah, in Grecia, you. but I live like in the mountain. In the, the mountain? Yeah, in the mountain. Uh -huh. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's not like from the center of Grecia, it's like a little bit uh, far from the center. Okay. Now, we, yeah. we, we just mentioned a little bit about location, but let's talk about the community. And I do know many expats choose, choose that. And we're thinking is location is one of them. I think mm -hmm. there is also an advantage of living in a, in a, a small town like Grecia. Uh, mm -hmm. and this is in general. I don't know if it happens if it happens to you, but when you're living in a big big city, everybody's in a rush, and the yeah. attitude and the attitude is usually a little bit more aggressive. It's a little bit. I'm busy, you know. I'm in a rush. <laughs> I'm busy. When you live in a small town, and it may be. Regardless of if you may be living in the in the states, if you live yeah. like in New York, you know, like downtown, yeah. you know, whatever, you're gonna find yes. everybody's running from one location to another. People is busy, and you're not gonna start shaking hands and meeting people like that. It's just a little mm -hmm. more like everybody is on their own little, you know, focus, their own little thing. Uh, when you're living in a very small town, it's usually more warm slow yes people will say <laughs> hi to you you know you see yes. people in school Good morning in what is yeah yeah people uh -huh. people is a lot more friendly they're curious i mean you're an expert you're somebody moving into aggressive they're curious here look at the gringo you know they want to say hi people want to <laughs> say hi when you're in san jose or when you're in Hako, it's just full of gringos and north americans expats or or canadians or whatever it might be that's kind of like the norm it's a very touristic yeah. location but for Grecia, i think you find this friendly uh a lot more slow paced community and then you get to connect with more people that's just my personal opinion uh, you guys could tell well, me well okay so let me let me say two things one when you're living like people are like oh i want to go to the beach a, a lot of time the community that you'll find are people that are trying to sell you something and i'm saying this in general you you can find community good communities at a beach but when you you know step off the boat if you will Fresh off the boat, you know, it's, you know, you're kind of bombarded with, you know, oh, I, I met this friend, but he wants to give me this tour. And and so when you're in a place like yeah. Grace, you're not getting that because they're not trying, they're not trying to get you to go to the next tour. They're just like, hey, you know, the one of the things that actually, which is leads to the second thing, was the one of the things that got me here was when I was looking all around, I knew it was gonna be Central Valley. I, I need to find places for my kids. I'm looking at Central Valley, and Central Valley is just close to, if you think of San Jose being in the middle of the, the center, there's Cartago, there's a lot of places. But as I was going around Central Valley, I landed in Gracia, and my Spanish wasn't where it is today. And I was like, you know, where's a good neighborhood to be at? And I say that in Spanish, but it was 
didn't sound right. Um, and a, a guy took the time, took 45 minutes on his grandmother's birthday, grabbed the whole family and like talked with me what? for 45 minutes. And, and as Pablo was saying, I'm used to, I'm in IT, uh, I'm, Columbus is, is, is slow, but it's, it's not like New York, but it's still, people don't have, they might give you five minutes where they give you zero in New York. They might give you five in, in Columbus, but to get 45 minutes to a complete stranger and have nothing to gain from it, yeah, that's kind of why I really like Gracie. It was just like, wow, really? Uh, and that wasn't the only instance. And so that's why I, I was actually drawn. The, the community here, I think, is really good. And again, like I said, they're patient with what you and your Spanish. Yeah, I like to. I like to also, you know, just 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 to introduce, say something. I just want to say something else. Guess what? Over over eighty percent of the entire Costa Rica population does not live near the ocean. You know, mm. most of the Costa Ricans don't live in Jaco, don't live in Tamarindo, don't live in near El Coco. Most of the Ticos, we live in the Central Valley, over 50% of the population. And mm. it's only about 20% of the Costa Ricans that would live near ocean, an ocean view or maybe even close to, uh, you know, Kepos, uh, Jaco. Is Samara and Osara, all of these beautiful ocean paradise locations. That's not how most Costa Ricans live. Most mm -hmm. Costa Ricans will live near the Central Valley because we need to work. We have to, you know, we have to do things. We have to do business, uh, or we need to study. Most of the main, I'll say, uh, if you have your kids in a private school, you might find a lot more locations for private schools in within the Central Valley. Yes, you will definitely find a lot more options. <laughs> in Samara or, or, I mean, if you live in Samara, you may only find one or two options for a private school. Right. Uh, if you live in San Jose, it's going to be like in the probably a hundred locations. Yeah, you, you find so, a lot more in the Central Valley. So there is a reason why is that, and I understand well, you want to live the dream on, on, on the ocean, but at the same uh, impracticality, uh, this is not how most people live. Now, I want to introduce Natalia because I know Natalia has lived in many places within Costa Rica. Yeah. And she was living at the border with, with Panama. Yeah. At the border with Panama. Uh, you know, being at the border, uh, she has a sense of what's the cost of living if you live yeah. at the border with Panama. So, in my opinion, it's less expensive to live at the border. It's about 20 to 30, maybe, yeah, 20 to 30 percent less expensive because you can buy goods. And yeah. fuel and gas. If you cook, if you're cooking with with gas, you can buy all that in Panama. So that's like 20, 30 percent less. Uh, but this is a location with very few people live in, in relationship to the rest of the country. And also, Natalia lived in San Jose and many other locations. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think about the cost of living? Yeah. Okay. Before I lived in in the next to the next to the border of Panama, I used to live in San Pedro, which is in San Jose. San Jose. Uh, so, uh, for example, I used to pay. Uh, $1,000 for my rental to, for my house. And oh. I'm sorry. And next I moved to, I, I next I moved to the border, to the border to Panama and my house was like uh, 400, 40, 40, 40, 400 colones, 400 colones. What do you say that? 400? Yeah, yeah, yeah four hundred thousand dollars. Four hundred thousand dollars, and, so, and that's seven hundred dollars. Yeah, seven hundred some change. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, four hundred dollars. Oh, four hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I hear you. I hear you. So <laughs> in San Jose, it's a thousand dollars your cost of living for rent. Yeah. And near the border with where you used to live, which once again is not a popular location. Yeah. It's a place that. Will not have gated communities at all. No. It's super hot. It's not the friendliest environment, you know. <laughs> I will probably not. But I love there. it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, but I mean, I was born in the <laughs> at the south. Uh, I was born in Ciudad Neli, right on. Yeah. Uh, my family, you know, is from there. By the way, Natalia is my cousin. That's why. That's how I know. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's a lot less expensive if you live yeah. near the border than if you live in San Jose. But now, in relationship to Grecia. But that, that was like two years ago. And now, uh, when my husband and I were looking for a place to live uh, near to San Jose, which we moved here because of business. <laughs> um, uh, we used to travel a lot, <laughs> like six hours to get to San Jose uh, from Ciudad Neili. And, and, and I mean, 
we were looking for a place to live and we were looking to rentals in San Jose. And I don't know why the prices like go skyrocket. Yeah. And we were thinking like, where can we live uh, in a good land, is uh, in a good place with a good backyard? And uh, we found this house in Grecia and we used to, I mean, we used to pay a lot of money in San Jose and now here we, we pay like 30% less or 40% less. And it's a big place with a big backyard. And yeah, the yeah. cost of living is super better here than in the center of San Jose. But yeah, if you can, if you want to live over here and buy a house or, or, or build a house, the, the piece of land is going to be super, super, um, well, not that expensive like San Jose. Like, right. no, and, and I would say something else just to, just to make... Living in San Jose is more expensive, but if you want to live in, in, in Jaco, downtown, or if you want to live in Tamarindo, downtown, uh, just like uh, we were saying before, those places are going to be also very expensive in rental. Sometimes you're not even, you're not going to find places to rent because it's all busy with the rental properties, you know, uh, you know, this vacation, vacation properties. So most people, most properties are, are designed for vacationers or, or tourists, yeah. uh, and it's super yeah. expensive. And the place uh, is gonna be small. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're gonna have a little tiny place. Yeah. The Maybe. price is gonna be higher, but the price the price is gonna be higher, and the place is gonna be smaller. Yeah. Maybe yeah. a few blocks, a few blocks from the ocean, but a lot more expensive. Not very practical if you want to stay for long, long term, term, or if you are in in a budget. Um, yeah. Let's, actually, let's, actually let's, I found I found right. in general that the closer that you are to like a tourist spot, especially like the beaches, you, you're going to pay a lot more just for the fact that you're there. Be, you're right because you're competing with people who are putting their houses up for Airbnb because they know they can get the money. You know, oh, I can get a month. I can get like three months of you know my mortgage paid off in a week because they can rent out you know Airbnb, and so they're going. So you're in competition with that almost constantly. Um, and so even um, the cost of living, because uh, I actually explored to, uh, you know, Liberia, it, the food and everything was just a little bit more. It's just like, OK, the house is more. I'm getting less. The food was, you know, more expensive. Um, and that's, you know, if you, that's like, I mean, it's close, but it's not that close to the beach. But it was close enough uh, just to be more expensive. So, yeah, it happens. So, so to summarize, we could say there is a lot more. It's a lot more convenient to live in the Central Valley as far as budget, but you can also find amenities. You can also find, you know, places. Uh, can, Natalia, can you can you tell me a little bit more about your location in in Grecia? Is it hard for you to do like go to the bank or find a good no, place to no. eat? I'm, I'm like five minutes ago uh, in car from the the bank or or I mean. Uh, Grecia have a lot of options uh, when you talk mm -hmm. about go to eat or go to get a coffee. Uh, mm -hmm. I I love to to eat in Grecia because there is a lot of options. And if I want to go to the I don't know to the theater to watch a movie, um, Grecia have a, a movie theater, but I prefer to go to like Alajuela, which is the biggest yeah. mall, city mall. Uh, mm -hmm. The and the and the theater there is like huge. And it's she like, wants to go. Like, minutes ago <laughs> she wants to go to the BAP and that's only available <laughs> that's <Yeah. laughs> actually that's the reason because I love the comfort and watch uh, my favorite movies with a huge big, in a big sofa yeah yeah, yeah. but great to have everything yeah great great yeah. does have a lot my, my daughter honestly uh, she loves ice cream and we just walk I mean literally we walk like oh this place no that place this place. and there's options Options for ice cream, options for pizza, uh, great hamburgers, K20s, so, um, yeah. um, is very good. And I mean, just sushi, there's a, there, now there, I think in my opinion, there's one sushi place. There are others that's pretty good, but the food is, you, you have your options. Now, um, Gracia is, you know, about convenience. It's, it's not just, you know, restaurants and stuff like, it's like, well, do you need something? Do I need to run to the grocery store? Well, you have like three or four options. It's not just, one option, um, yeah. which I love about it. If you need to go get the hardware, you know, hardware, you need to do something, you need a light bulb or anything in between, there, there's different hardware places in Gracia. 
And so everything you kind of need, go ahead. No, no, do you live next to the park, right? Yeah, I live next to the park. Yeah, and next to the park is like Pali, it's the grocery store. Yes, uh-huh. Yeah. And, and if you go to the center of Grace, you can find everything near to the, to the park. So, so yeah. you walk around the park and you find everything. You find everything you need, which I, which I love. I don't have to get in the car for anything. I, I, I walk. And if, if I want something particular, I'll just go to the other grocery store. Do you, do you guys have a farmer's market? Oh, yeah, we have a farmer's market, yes. Okay. <laughs> so we, we have so, Farm La Feria. Um, La Feria, is, yeah. Yeah, it's right down. So the farmer's market, for everybody who doesn't know, um, is a place where they sell fruits, Uh, fruits, vegetables, and they're all fresh, fish, meats, cheese, uh, you, you name it. And it is, and, uh, and, and Gracia, it's on Friday and Saturday. And so people will come from different parts of Costa Rica and, and they'll be from here as well, but they'll come here and set up shop and they'll sell all these fresh items. So every Friday and every Saturday, you might, you might have some in your city in the United States, But in, in Ohio, it was like only, you know, three months in the summertime. But no, this is all year round. And they have all these things that you can you can buy. And honestly, for some odd reason, a lot of expats go there. Uh, so it is a convenient place to meet other expats. Um, they're there generally on, I think, Friday. And then Saturday, they, they sh started to shut down. They start to shut things down at the end of uh, the Saturday part. But yeah, it, it is there and it's big. Everything is of, of good quality and everything is like 20 times cheaper than the supermarket. Of course. Mm -hmm. So let me let me let me say this why this is why the farmers market is important to me and a lot of experts do not know about the farmers market is you can save a lots of money by going I mean $20 yeah. 20 bucks 10,000 colones you bring like two three bags yeah. full with everything you need. Uh, yeah. for the for the entire week so yeah. it's 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 so good it's so inexpensive a lot of people complain Costa Rica is expensive but yeah. they just don't know where to shop and this is a traditional thing for Costa Ricans and it's also something that is designed to uh, help the agriculture industry the farmer that you know cultivates in their property and they you know they get everything from from their from their you know they get everything from their land fresh They go mm -hmm. to this to these markets and they basically don't pay a fee or have a very little fee just to put their little stand. So it's not expensive for the for the farmer and they don't have to pay tax on that. The municipality mm -hmm. waived that as a benefit for the for this industry. Uh, so the government trying to protect. So it becomes something that is important within the within the Costa Rica, uh, within the Costa Rica. The ticos we all go to the farmers. If you're not going to the farmer's market, if you're not going to the farmer market. You may be busy in a lot because it's also to me it's also like part of our culture. We go to, to yeah you know, to this. And it's, and it's funny because in, in sometimes you can regatear like bargain. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And if something I don't know, and if something costs like five dollars, you can say mm, four dollars. <laughs> and they're like, okay, okay, yeah. And that's super funny. Yeah, so yeah. That, that was what I was going to say. That if you like, it was like for here on Saturday, since the Saturday is like the last day of the, uh, that they have it, uh, like if you go on Saturdays, you can definitely bargain because they want to get rid of all the stuff where they're going to have to take it back with them wherever they're going. Uh, and so, yeah, you might get a big bat, you know, more, you know, on Fridays, you can get two, you know, whatever it was, let's say tomatoes. But by Saturday, like here, here's a whole bag for the same price. What and so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that'll thing. The, the other thing uh, I want to say to the expat communities that are watching this is that um, Costa Ricans or Ticos are very good on the science of agriculture, how to grow something, how to make it better. So, yeah, I think the quality of food, this is my opinion, I think the quality of food is, is, is a little bit better here than I've had it in the United States where you get like processed stuff. So going to the farmer's market and you get the fresh stuff. Oh, it's awesome. And then third is kind of a, a tip is that um, when you go to uh, the farmer's market, um, there is, it's, you'll see things that you don't, we don't have in the United States. I've never seen like these type of fruits and you, you might hit or miss in the grocery store, but when you go to the farmer's market, I mean, you're seeing vegetables and fruits that honestly, that are very good, but they're just, I've never seen them in the United States. So I'm going to say they're not available, at least in, in mass in, in the United States. So it's a very good experience just to even go. 
So, so there is too much to say about in a small town expat location like Grecia. There are many experiences to share, and it's impossible. You have to come. Yeah, you have to make the visit. You have to contact, you know, Keenan uh, for for you know to learn more about these things. Uh, <laughs> if if you wish, here is his Instagram, and he also has a, a YouTube channel. Um, you have to come and, and do your, I guess, exploration. And Grecia may be yeah. a good location. Atenas is another location. All of those yeah. towns around uh, Grecia, Sarchi, Naranjo, San Ramon are, are popular within the expat community. Yes. So ultimately, uh, we just wanted to share something about it. Uh, I think this is so important for my customers. Our customers, we help them with the international move from United States, Canada, or Europe to Costa Rica. We do coordinate the container, the shipping, uh, all of that fun stuff, the customs, and we do all that. Uh, but to me, providing this information is useful so they can really decide what, you know, what is it that they want to want to do. And uh, hopefully this information is useful. If you want more information about what we do, which, which is international shipping, you can book a consultation call at our website. If you need uh, here, our website is all the way down here. Yeah, uh, right here by me, by me. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and 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 if you need somebody to help you as a as a life coach about this transition and finding purpose with with your move uh, to Costa Rica, you can you can talk to Keenan and he'd be happy to help you. He's got also content in his YouTube and also in his Instagram. And you know, this is our time. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Natalia. See you on Bye-bye. Thank you, Kenan. Bye-bye.